Ever since Bruce Wayne decided to fight crime in Gotham City, he knew that he would have to master a million things. Martial arts, weaponry, gadgetry, you name it. And he couldn't do it half-heartedly. For his goal, he had to avail the best of the best masters, put himself in extreme situations, push his body to unprecedented limits, and broaden his horizons as much as possible. And that is exactly what he did. He sought out the greatest masters, as a result of which he both a ridiculously versatile skill set today. However, this didn't come easily to him, and he had to often train under those he disagreed with when it came to philosophies. In today's video, we'll talk about 13 such masters who have been responsible for making Batman as skilled as he is. Before though we go into our explanation, a very small request, if you like our content, please support us by subscribing to this channel. Little click for you, but for us it means a great deal. Thank you. Henry Ducard, Manhunter and Detective Work Starting the list with one of Batman's most infamous mentors, Henry Ducard and Batman came across one another for the first time in France. You may also recognise him as the character played by Liam Neeson in Christopher Nolan's Batman Begins. Ducard was based in Paris, renowned for his incredible detective skills and ability to hunt or track down any man. He was believed to be the greatest in his field, making a younger Bruce Wayne seeker him out in France. The caped crusader went on to train under Ducard, where he learned how to become the target to optimize his ability as a hunter while trying to track down a man named Jeremiah Hassan. However, Ducard later kills Jeremiah, bringing his relationship with Batman to an abrupt end since Batman didn't believe in killing. On top of that, Ducard was a mercenary who broke the law while Bruce underwent rigorous training to uphold and protect the law. During a separate incident, Ducard Ducard tries to test out Bruce's potential by letting his son Morgan have a go against Wayne. Bruce was caught off guard in an alley, but despite the odds against his favour, he defeated Morgan. On witnessing his son's loss, Bruce found himself at the receiving end of Ducard's silencer, who threatened to kill Bruce for humiliating his son. However, Bruce took the opportunity to play psychologically with Ducard, ultimately taking the win following the intervention. Ducard sported a sociopathic nature and did did whatever he did only for his selfish reasons and personal financial benefits. He had even cracked Batman's identity after coming to Gotham City, and he intended to sell it off or blackmail Bruce for money. Of course, Bruce didn't allow for anything of that to happen, and rightfully so. Kerry G. Martial Arts Kerry G was another complicated mentor and figure in the life of Bruce Wayne. A master of ninjutsu, Kerry G had taught Bruce Wayne several martial arts techniques, most notably his renowned move of the vibrating palm strike. The strike was infamous for having the ability to kill its receiver instantly. However, with Bruce Wayne's opinions on killing, Batman never used the technique on his opponents, at least not to take their lives. Meanwhile, Kerry G's skill set resulted in him becoming a palm Part of the League of Assassins, where Rush Al Ghul brought him in to train others to be phenomenal assassins. Naturally, other people picked up Kiri G's vibrating palm technique, but they didn't have the same no-killing policy or mindset as Bruce Wayne. Ten years following Bruce's training with Kiri G in North Korea, the Caped Crusader tries to hunt down a man named Ralph Stewart following a woman's murder. Stewart turns out to be more scared than cocky about the situation, primarily concerning himself. This inadvertently proves that he is not the main perpetrator of the problem. Batman's investigation and experience as an undercover agent ultimately led him to Stewart's partner, Muggs Clifford, who is the man responsible for the murder. Soon he learns of the involvement of another man named Thaddeus Gladden and goes after him, only to learn that Gladden had been murdered. Batman eventually learns that Rush Al Ghul's League of Assassins is behind the murders as he engages them in a fight. He successfully takes down most of them when the last two assassins attack him with Kerry G's vibrating palm strike. Batman later takes them down by using the same trick but avoiding their deaths. Later he meets with Kerry G. He expresses his regrets about training under a man who trained criminal assassins. Alfred Pennyworthy, Arts and Combat Medicine, Voice Mimicry and Disguise If there's one person who has been by Bruce Wayne's side since the very beginning, it has been Alfred Pennyworthy. The fact that Alfred has imparted several skills and life lessons to Bruce before and after the death of Dr. Thomas and Martha Wayne is a given. 
Alfred initially joined the Wayne family as an intelligence agent. He later took on the duty of teaching Bruce the arts involved in combat medicine and other medical procedures. He also taught Bruce about being the master or disguise while teaching him voice mimicry. Most notably, Alfred helps Bruce Wayne uphold his image of being a billionaire playboy, which allows him to keep his secret identity as Batman. Not too long ago, the dangerous Joker war came to an end. During the war, Batman had no choice but to pair up with Two-Face and Harvey Dent, whose split personality conditions only seemed to worsen. During a fight with the Joker, the clown prince of crime sets off an attack that causes excellent damage around him and even caused Two-Face to revert to his psychotic persona. An explosion at the scene with the Joker resulted in Harvey Dent ending up with a bullet in his head, which meant that it needed to be surgically removed. The caped crusader was the one who ultimately stepped up to perform the neurosurgery. With his family background, it would not be hard to assume that Bruce Wayne had acquired his first aid training from his father, who was a doctor. However, it's believed that this skill was passed down to him, not by Dr. Thomas Wayne, but by Alfred, who also happened to be quite skilled in the medical field. Ultimately, Bruce rendered Two-Face immobile temporarily and proved that he was capable of conducting a complicated surgery masterfully. He removed the bullet from Two-Face's brain and ensured that Two-Face's body fell under the control of Harvey Dent instead of the psychotic alter ego. Chu Chin Lee, Martial Arts Batman is more than just acknowledged for his martial arts. There have been instances where after he has weakened Superman with kryptonite, the Bat has made it more than evident that when it comes to his skill set as a fighter, he is far and above compared to everyone. The one responsible for Bruce Wayne being able to boast such a diverse skill set is Chu Chin Lee. Not only did Chu Chin Lee teach Bruce every move in the book, but he also made sure that Bruce learned everything beyond it. Gradually, Bruce became his favorite student. He even learned acupuncture under Chu Chin Li and was exposed to the wisdom and mysticism of the Eastern culture. Chu Chin Li believed that enduring suffering meant that good deeds were being performed, which seems to be a recurring theme that is omnipresent within Bruce Wayne. Wayne has sacrificed his life and his happiness to keep Gotham City safe with his good deeds. Besides that, during his training, Bruce had to learn how to resist pain while knowing that being unable to do so was not a failure of the body, but a failure of the mind. Chin Li wished for Bruce to stay at the school permanently, but that obviously went against Bruce's plans for the future. As such, he had to leave his master's side. Later, Chu Chin Li was beheaded. David Kane taught Batman how to effectively kill with ease, though Bruce would never actually resort to killing. David Kane is one of the best masters one can dream of having, and his roster of students sports some great names, Bruce Wayne being just one of them. This deadly assassin had trained the likes of Deathstroke and was the father of Cassandra Kane as well. While learning under David Kane, Bruce was taught how to kill someone effectively and easily. It was a different story that Bruce would never go on though to perform this feat, but he had acquired the knowledge to do so nonetheless. Meanwhile, Deathstroke and Batman, being the pupils of the same master, had a very personal rivalry, especially with Deathstroke wishing to best Batman at all times. The two have gone against one another time and again. Since Kane was a high-ranking assassin, he was once hired by Two-Face to kill James Gordon. However, his attempt was foiled by Cassandra. Harvey Harris detective work. Before becoming Batman, Bruce Wayne was Robin, at least according to this particular story. As a boy, Batman found a role model in Detective Harvey Harris. The story is narrated in a flashback sequence, with Bruce Wayne giving Dick Grayson, or the modern-day Robin during the time of the comic's release, a sneak peek into his life in the past. Admiring Harris's work as a detective, a young Bruce Wayne tailed him to be his mentee while donning a self-made costume. He eventually started working on some gruesome cases alongside Harris, who couldn't help but acknowledge young Bruce's intelligence and his wit. Harris initially wanted to allow Bruce to string along and eventually send him back home. He tried to pinpoint Bruce's origins by bringing up small details concerning Bruce's clothing to learn of his roots. However, Bruce caught on to Harris's tricks and prevented his master from learning much about him. On the other hand, Bruce being able to pull off such a thing was really impressive to Harris. Harris was not the type to dive headfirst 
burst into a fight, but he was always more than willing to show off his martial arts if the situation ever called for it. Eventually, Harris experienced a tragic death, acting as one of the catalysts behind Bruce Wayne's growth from the immense pain that he had in his life. Richard Dragon, Kung Fu and helping Bruce get back in shape after he was broken by the villain Bane. Another martial artist who impacted Bruce Wayne with his teachings would be Richard Dragon. You must be aware of Batman's terrible experience with Bane, where the Cape Crusader's back was broken. He was nursed back to his original form by Richard Dragon, who also taught Bruce how to learn to focus on being able to heal his body by himself. Richard Dragon has also been a mentor to some of DC's finest superheroes, including the likes of The Huntress and Barbara Gordon. Wildcat, deadliest hand-to-hand -hand combatants. This is a character that looks somewhat similar to the Bat himself. However, Bruce Wayne and Ted Grant are far from being the same person. Ted had an exciting story. He used to be a well-known boxer. However, his opponent's death resulted in Ted having to take the brunt of the blame, mostly because he was framed. This pushed him to adopt the alter ego of Wildcat, whose motive was to fight criminals. With his background as a boxer, fighting was Ted's cup of tea from the get-go. However, as a hero, he he went on to acquire more and more skills when it came down to fighting. So apart from being a master boxer, Ted Grant gained training in Hapkido, Kapuera, Muay Thai and Krav Maga. After becoming Bruce Wayne's mentor, he passed down his knowledge to his student. However, just like David Kane, Bruce Wayne was not the Wildcats' only DC famous mentee. In fact, he had also trained the likes of The Flash, Black Canary and Catwoman. When it came to Batman specifically, however, Wildcat was the man who was mainly behind Bruce Wayne's exemplary skills in hand-to-hand -hand combat. John Zatara, Sleight of Hand, Arcane Mysteries, Ventriloquism, Escapism. The name must ring a lot of bells. John Zatara is the second father to a renowned daughter entry on our list. Known initially as Giovanni Zatara, John was the father to Zatana, the magician. John belonged to a subspecies of human beings who could practice magic, which makes sense considering his daughter Zatana is renowned for her magical prowess. He used his powers to make Bruce learn the art of escapology, resulting in Batman acquiring his killer stealth. With John's training, Batman was taught to take down his enemies without letting them know of his presence in the same room. The two began their mentor-mentee relationship after Bruce took upon the alias of John Smith and approached Zatara. Meanwhile, Zatara could identify the depth of Bruce's desire to learn the arts, even though Bruce claimed to never becoming a stage performer. Sergei Alexandrov, Invention Sure, Batman has a plethora of abilities, such as knowing martial arts, being stealthy, being a top-tier surgeon and the likes. However, his gadgets truly make Batman the king of Gotham City. With access to these high-tech elements, Batman can do just about anything when it comes to fighting crime in Gotham City. However, his knowledge and prowess with gadgets didn't appear overnight. The engineer known as Sergei Alexandrov taught a 21-year-old Bruce Wayne the nitty-gritty of gadgetry and weaponry, allowing the Caped Crusader to create his first ever Batarang and everything that followed. He even taught Batman to create his own tools depending on his personal requirements. Today, Batman's utility belt is easily one of the most useful things to the Dark Knight. Shihan Matsuda, Power of Mind if there is something Bruce has knocked his skill set out of the park with, it is his mastery over his own body, and this was taught to him by one of the strongest martial artists and ninjutsu experts in DC, known as Shihan Matsuda. While Wayne was in Japan, he was taught by this Zen Buddhist monk warrior and master of mind control. At first, Bruce was turned down under the guise that Masuda was a myth. However, his persistence ultimately bore fruit, and he became the master's mentee. Matsuda taught Bruce a plethora of strange techniques as well. In one instance, Matsuda got Bruce to melt the ice by just thinking of warmer thoughts. He also taught Bruce to slice a coconut with a katana mid-air, all whilst ensuring that the coconut landed on the ground in one piece. Shihan Matsuda had become like Bruce's father, while he considered Matsuda's wife to be a mother figure in his life. However, Matsuda didn't encourage this, as he believed that emotion 
emotional ties would weaken Wayne. In fact, he asked his mentee to embrace the darkness within him. His extreme paranoia had a great effect on Wayne as well, since Matsuda taught Wayne not to trust others ever. Clearly, that is a common trait present in the billionaire even to this day. Matsuda lived in the Himalayan mountains with his wife. They were close to a local girl named Mio, who Bruce had fallen in love with. However, Matsuda believed in letting go of attachments, which his wife was not fond of. She even discouraged Bruce from following this principle of his mentors, claiming that it had turned Matsuda's heart into stone. Ultimately, Matsuda's paranoia returned to bite him back when his wife got Mio to stab Matsuda to death. Bruce soon learned that Mio was made to seduce Bruce to gain access to Matsuda while his wife was after Matsuda's fortune. Mio also had shards and mortal wounds to her back caused by Matsuda's wife. Meanwhile, Matsuda remained alive and then stabbed his wife in the back. Ultimately, all three of them died as a result of the fiasco, and Matsuda left Bruce with one more lesson as he showed his mentee what misfortune, attachments, and closeness could bring to him. Shao La Toism Bruce learned Taoism from an eccentric old woman named Shao La. She used to attach him to something similar to a kite and push him off the cliff of a mountain. She then steered the kite, which trained him to fly in his bat suit's glider. Later, a fortune teller predicted that Bruce would kill the teller's student, known as Little Dragon, and become Batman, even though the last revelation was vague. The fortune teller was also a rival Taoist master. In a separate comic later, this fortune came true when Bruce fought gangsters in Chinatown. Dragon and Batman met one another, and Batman bested the other, prompting Dragon to commit suicide. Don Miguel Driving Batman drives the coolest car in fiction, the Batmobile. Of course, regular driving skills simply won't cut it concerning this beast of a car. Criminal Don Miguel used to drive a pimped out car brimming with high-tech gadgets and even a rocket launcher. He was also 100% okay with killing as well. Due to his efficiency in avoiding the police repeatedly and his finesse in pulling through extreme chases, he was sought out by a 19-year-old Bruce Wayne who was learning whatever he could under others to master everything necessary for him to become the ultimate crime fighter. Miguel was a criminal in Rio de Janeiro and was paid by Bruce, who wished to learn high-speed car chases, which Batman does a lot of, especially with the Joker. However, Bruce always knew that Miguel was a criminal, so after he was done with the training, he crashed Miguel's car and knocked him out to get him apprehended by the police for his streak of murders. Bruce Wayne. The Marvelous Verdict Batman can create antidotes, perform surgeries, outdo the greatest martial artists, pilot any and every vehicle, and be a master of stealth all within one mission. He goes after some of the most eccentric criminals the DC Universe has to offer, and somehow always manages to beat them at everything, making Batman not just an all-rounder, but an absolute ace of a hero and of a crime fighter. I have always loved Batman. We'd love to have your comments below, and if you like our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Do have a good one, and please be safe.